Hi and welcome to week 2 tutorial where I'm going to introduce you to the basics of Adobe Camera Raw. So this is where we finalised last week in the tutorial where I got you to download, archive, then rate and sort your, your files as well as I showed you how to um, apply some metadata information. But let's just open up um, some files in Adobe Camera Raw and so that you can have a first look. Now I can open all these files up by selecting the first one, shift down, opening the last one and that will open all of these nine files. See, nine selected. But I'm just going to open, let's open these two here. Open two files, so select those two, come up here, open in Camera Raw. There they are opening in Camera Raw. So this is your interface. So some of you have already been editing your photographs in Adobe Photoshop and others uh, no, uh, have already been looking at images through Adobe Lightroom or something like that for quite a while. But what I want you to do this semester is to follow this workflow and just to see how it works for you. And I want to slow down the process a little bit so that you can think about each change that you make and why would you make it. So this is a software that applies parametric um, changes to your image but in doing so or whilst doing so never ever changes or destroys any of the original capture data. When you open up your files they will always dis be displayed in this left hand side um, viewer here. Okay. Along the top right hand uh, side is a series of tools, a zoom tool, hand tool, so just run your cursor over them and it will tell you what they do. So I like to think of, of these from here, from targeted adjustment tool right through to radial filter and localized changes. So in order of importance. What I'm going to say to you is the zoom tool is important but up here we'll use the zoom tool, the crop tool, the straighten tool and but mostly we'll be working in this right hand side um, working with the basic editing in the first place and then through to sharpening and then come back to these localized tools bit later in the tutorial or in the second tutorial. So let's have a look what does Adobe Camera Raw interface have to offer for you. First of all it provides you a histogram so that's a histogram for that image and this one. See they're quite different because they're quite different images. So remember from last semester, histogram is a visual display of the capture data. Okay. The beauty of Adobe Camera Raw, as we run the cursor across this histogram, it tells us what area of the tone, no, of the tonal range of the image is associated with that histogram. So look at this. So this is your blacks, blacks, shadows, Exposure is your mid-tone, so can you remember that one? That's important. Exposure is your mid-tones, highlights and whites. So as we process image, when we get down to this area here, you see that these line up. So when we work with exposure, we're working with mid-tones, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. And you'll see those changes um, reflected in the, in the histogram. But let's work logically. So that's the beauty of ACR, that it is an extremely logical program. So our histogram, our capture information, we'll come back to the RGB values later on. Then we have white balance. You know all about white balance from last semester. When shooting JPEG, if you didn't set your, set your white balance correctly, then you would end up with very strangely coloured images. So this white balance as shot, or I can change it to, let's change it to cloudy because look at that lovely cloudy day that we have and it just cleans up the image a little. 
if I'm not satisfied with what the, um, the presets will deliver for me, I can go in here and I can customize. Okay, just using that slider. And there we are. The next part, and Adobe, for, Adobe is really good at this, it separates each section with a you know, this line. So we've gone the histogram and then we've done the white balance and the next part is just this basic um, processing. So this is a chance to address our exposure. What do we need to change in our original capture in the exposure um, to rectify any problems? So Adobe Raw does gives you some um, does give you some degree of leniency with your exposure. But if you've got a really bad exposure, even Adobe Raw can't help you. But I'm going to look at this photograph and I'm seeing that there's really heavy shadow detail in this area. I see these really deep green of these trees, but the sky is a little bit washed out. But there's nice tonal range in this center area. So if I get this exposure slider and I'm going to show you what happens when I bring it down to the left. So I am decreasing the exposure. So now it looks like an underexposed image. Or to the right, it's overexposed. So do I need to open up that exposure? I would say I am going to open up the exposure just to get just that little bit more detail in there because I know I can go back into these localized tools to do some fine tuning a little bit later. But the next bit is where the magic really happens. So ensure that you have these highlight and shadow clipping warning on. And using the option key on a Mac, hold that down or an Alt in on a Windows. We're going to push, so you see how it goes to threshold, goes to black. When I push the highlights to the right, can you see what's happening with that histogram? And if I push it too far, then that's when it gives me my warning. So pull it back until those warnings go. Stop. With the shadows, we're going to go to the left, so we're going to darken our shadows. To the left, to the left. No warning. Very good. Whites won't, I was going to say, it won't push very far until we get that warning up. And the blacks. So that's a very different image to what we started at. I'll just show you that. There's your before and after. So I know that in the mid-tones, look at this difference in this area here. Huge amount of difference. But I don't like what's happened to the trees over here. They've blocked up. And I don't like what's happened to the sky. I know I can fix the sky up. And I know I can fix this bit up as well, though, with those localized tools. So I'm going to leave that go just for a second whilst I go down to this area here. So I'll make these files a little bit larger so you can see what's going on. Get my hand tool, move that over. So clarity refers to the um, apparent sharpening of the midtones. So let me grab that. If you're not sure what a tool does, then just push it as far as it'll go to you to the right. So that's its furthest of addition or adding clarity. Or the furthest it'll go to the left, that's the amount of you no know, zero clarity. So that's where it was at double click on that little toggle and it takes it back to zero. I'm going to add fifteen percent there. There it is. Let's get our zoom tool and just zoom on in this little tree. And you'll see that it has apparent clarity. Can you see now that those little pixels are sharpened? So be careful with that clarity tool. 
because see what happens when I push it up too much? There is nothing worse than an over sharpened photograph. So I'm going to bring that down a bit to about 10 because I'll apply um, customised sharpening in another step in the workflow but not right now. I'll bring that down to 100% again which is where you should always be when you're applying any type of um, sharpening. down so in applying those changes to this file the way I've suggested using the option key so that you can see what happens with the image then you will always know at what point is your white and black point so I'm just going to open those shadows up a little bit because that's really troubling me how blocked up these trees had become. And I can't know, the blacks isn't where I need to change, it's just in that shadow detail. So if I come up here now to the adjustment brush this is where I can apply, very simply apply, some more changes. So let's just go, move this across, let's go, cycle it back to here. So it's adjustment brush and you can see it's much the same settings that was in the um, basic editing pane. So happy with the colour temperature, we'll leave that one as it is. But the exposure is somewhere I can customise my image quite quickly. So, one more, there it is. As I said, I thought that the sky was a little bit overexposed. So, by bringing that slider down, let's just give it a little bit of love here and my brush up because the um, broken. Uh, line are the feathered edges and the center is the target for the brush. So I'm just going to brush on a little bit more exposure. Now I'm just going to show down here and there's my mask. So that's where I have applied the mask. Make my brush small, the left hand side left hand side brackets makes it small, right hand bigger. I can erase past of that mask so I don't want, obviously I don't want to add exposure to those trees they're already too dark so I'll just neat and clean that bit up there. I just need to add to here though. Okay so if I turn off the mask, click off that overlay, but whilst it's still active, look at ah, oh, look at this. So it's still active. It's still an active layer. I can adjust that exposure as much as I want to. How easy is that? So once again, I want to add a new brush and know how I was a little bit concerned about the blocking up of those trees in the foreground. I know I'm going to have to give them just a little bit more exposure so let's make that brush a little bit larger and I'm just going to brush on that area there. And as I showed you before by using the mask I can clean up any areas that I don't want included in that adjustment. Always work with a feather on your brush. I'm going to turn the mask off now so I can see what's happening there. And up, up, up. Let's make them larger. And if I want to bring that exposure up a little bit more, there it is. I can bring it up as much as I want to. So use your zoom tool to zoom in and out of areas that need some work. And if you need to, once you're in, if I look at this area here, it just needs a little bit more in that one. So go back into the localized tool, go new, exposure, 
and just work in this area here. Now that's way too much, bring it back. There it is. So a job that you used to do in Adobe Photoshop has just been done quite easily in Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm just going to go up. I've got a little bit of edge there where the, the mask, where that adjustment went. So what else do we want to do with this image? Let's see where our mask is, that's where our mask is. Let's go into this one here, where's our mask, there it is. Let's look at this one, there's our mask with that. So we can keep them here. Oh, I'm just going to look at that one. Let's get my eraser. This one here. With the mask. There is a little bit of surplus there. There it is, just erase that. So in that very short time, our image has changed quite considerably. There it is. Now you might have noticed that I have not at this stage, I have not touched the vibrance or the saturation in that image, but can you see a, mark, uh, a, a marked um, change in the vibrance and saturation of the image? And that's just because I have reset the exposure, nothing else. That's all I've done. So if you don't do anything else to your photographs um, at this point, then you've made it better. But before I exit today's tutorial, I just want to take you into the Crop tool and the Straighten tool. Okay, so let's just cycle through these again to a single image, bring it up. Now look at that and do I want to crop that image? So this is an opportunity for you to crop the image if you want to. So let's look at the 9x16 format, which is a lovely landscape format. And as you see, when I run that crop tool across the, the image, up comes our lovely little rule of third indicators. So if I decide what's important, the foreground or the sky. So what's the most important? But I'm going to use, if I set that around there, and that's what I end up with, the lovely line that leads directly into the image. I've got a little area there that needs fixing up, but I'll do that at my leisure. If I think the image needs some straightening, then um, double click to straighten automatically. The poor old software doesn't know what line is what there, so we're not going to do that. We're going to use this as a measure tool. So is there anything straight there? No, there's no horizon at all. Let's say this is our straight horizon, and there it is. So to use this, the straighten tool, you really do have to have something in the image which is, you know, as straight. And um, because otherwise, what's going to happen is, it's really annoying me, what's going to happen is that it um, will choose its own level. So remember, Adobe Camera Raw is an opportunity for you to customise the image exactly how you want it to appear. Not how anybody else, not like how the um, software wants it to appear. So a JPEG is processed in camera, it's customised by the camera software and not by yourself. I can keep on working on this image and um, but we'll, I think we'll leave it at that for today. This image here is a great example of how to use this straighten tool to straighten the image. It's quite crooked. So let's assume that this fence post is straight. Let's zoom it up so we can go there. And how straight are straight uh, fence posts? Mm. 
not vary by it, apparently. going to tip that all so in the straighten tool tip it all a little bit stretch it out so we're not cropping too much of the image and straighten the image if you want to clear any crop so let's go back to normal clear the crop and we're back to normal. So I think that's a really good start for um, processing in Adobe Camera Raw. I'll do a couple more examples for you and um, post them for you in very soon. Thank you.